Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife and Resources Agency. Well, we're back on Outdoors with Larry Ray. I thought I'd start something different. You there know, you go. I, I, didn't, I didn't jump in it, but uh, uh, we're having trouble hooking up with Steve McAdams because he is working on his duck blinds, so the, which a lot of our friends are doing this uh, weekend as they get ready for duck season. Of course, uh, we'll get Steve back on when we uh, can get him in, uh, with service, but uh, we do have Dave Gabbert and Gene Smith. Gene Smith's in the studio without his joke book. He's doing all by his head, and which is kind of scary uh, when we start thinking about that. And of course, Dave is uh, Dave has got my rifle ready, and uh, uh, I've I've done my target practicing. And the main thing I got to remember, Dave, is take a breath, squeeze easy, and uh, don't jerk. Uh, don't jerk. Uh, what else did you say? I can't remember, but. Uh, Open your eyes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hunt probably uh, maybe this afternoon. I know I can't hunt Monday because I'm going to my cancer doctor and I'm playing golf Tuesday, but I'm going to hunt a couple of times next week uh, at the McCrory Farm up in uh, in uh, Har- Hardeman County. But uh, I'm looking forward to it because Dave, like I said, has got my gun. Uh, of course, I didn't have to worry about my shotgun because uh, I didn't use it last year. But I'm planning to do some duck hunting this year with uh, Frank Barton, and we will have Frank on next week's show. I know it's not third Saturday, but Frank is down at uh, Thomasville, Georgia, uh, at the uh, Master National Retriever Club Championship with over 1,200 dogs participating. And we thought about getting Frank on uh, today, but I said, no, let's just wait till Frank gets back, and we'll get some kind of a, a wrap-up from him uh, uh, but we do have uh, Will Davis, Jr. He's going to be on next week's show. Uh, he is the BASS Elite Series champion and the first angler in history to repeat as the BASS national champion. And also, we're going to talk a little uh, gunsmithing. I know that's one of Dave's favorite subjects, because, uh, but Keith Warner is going to be on with us next week to, to talk about uh, having your rifle and your shotgun prepared for the seasons. And I don't know, Dave, you uh, you took my 270, which uh, has been around for a long time. I've got that tamer on the end that uh, Wayne Umbarger put on there where there's no kick or anything. But uh, the gun is still functional, right? I mean, it's uh, it's the gun-e. Oh, yeah. It's no, not the no. gun. It's the gun-e, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's usually what that. It's what the, the old saying, it's usually not the arrow, but the Indian behind it. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's, that's right. right. That sounds like a pun right there. So well, a lot of people buy a gun right off the rack without having it tuned. You, you actually have to have them tuned. You know, the, big, the biggest mistake I see with people, what? you know, they don't understand, you know, a hunting rifle is made to hit that target the first shot out of a cold bore barrel. Yes, yeah. A lot of people, when they go out to start zeroing in a rifle, and there's a lot of hunting rifles out there have what I call thin wall barrels. Okay, right. all right. And you know what that the means? More, the more you shoot them, you heat that barrel up, they're going to expand a little bit. Mm-hmm. I found that out, yeah. Your speed uh, will, you know, not be the best. Uh-huh. And, and that I can, you know, over my history of uh, dealing with firearms and mess- and messing with firearms, as I like to call it. Uh, you know, several of the premier rifle makers over the years that used to be around were, you know, really notable for their that thin wall barrel. Really? And, uh, yeah. I did, not, so, I, I did not know that. Yeah. And uh, so uh, that's why, you know, when you bring yours up, you know, I start, you know, we're going to start, you know, I clean, even if it was clean when you took it away. And then <laughs> yeah. it, first thing I do is put it in the, at the station and I'm going to clean that barrel that, so the, you know, uh, I want that last patch coming out with no, you know, hardly any residue, if any, whatsoever. And that's what you did. You know? Yeah. That's but but what you, we did. you also... Uh, we we uh, started kind of short and went long. I mean, uh, uh, we didn't just start off shooting hundred yard targets either. A lot no. of people, a lot of people say, "Well, I'm just going to go ahead and 
you know, mark it in at 200 yards. Well, and, no, I think. Hey, I've, I've known over the years a person walk into a uh, local gun shop and just hand them a rifle and say, can you bore sight this? That's, that's how I've heard Oh, boy, yeah, bore sight. Yeah. Bore sight. I haven't heard that in a while. I'll probably they bore, get it bore sighted, and they never take it and shoot it, so, and then they go hunting with it, you know. Well, that's why you can buy it on Friday at uh, – at some place and take it out the next morning for opening day and say, I'm ready. And the two, so it's, it, in, a, in my 270, it's a still capable uh, firearm for, uh, for deer hunting. I think, you know, uh, yeah, you know, we're talking, you know, like your, your make a rifle that you have there. Uh-huh. And it's an older one and the quality they put it in that, you know, that that rifle's capable of shooting at a hundred thousand rounds through it and still, you know, function like it's supposed to. Well, it you sure know. puts out some sound when uh, it may not. It suppresses the uh, the the kick, but if anybody's around me, they better hold their ears because that sound comes right back at you. It's almost like a uh, atomic well, bomb, and your hair stands up. You know, when you were shooting. It up there, and I was standing behind you, looking through the spot and scope down there at the at the metal targets uh-huh. at at 125 yards as you were heading. Yeah, uh, you know the 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 station you're shooting from is kind of covered. Yes, and yeah, he would touch that round off, and it would knock the filter the dust down from right. the round. Exactly, oh, yeah. it did it. I didn't know that. Yeah, I know that uh, ear protection is is important but uh and again we're talking with uh, dave gabbert and gene smith here on outdoors with larry rays we close out today's show and we'll try to get uh, uh steve mcadams on in a, in a future show when he's not out there working on his duck blind but uh we'll talk a lot of this next week with gunsmith keith warner who i've known since my days at, at Dattle sports but yeah. dave if you if you visit dave gabbert uh it's like a step back into the the, the old time uh, he's got his bunker there. You know, uh, if there's a tornado, I want to be in that bunker with Dave down there because uh, when you say a man cave, this is really a man cave. <laughs> this is, you're, you're in a cave, and, and uh, but you've taken it to another level, though, Dave. I know uh, with what you've done, and, and, and I can see how much – you just like to do it, don't you? I mean uh, – Oh, yeah. You know, it's something that, you know, uh, I just – I love to shoot. Been shooting since I was six years old, I guess. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I like to shoot, and uh, uh, so it's. Uh, but get I your rifle. Much, yeah, yeah. I don't hunt that much anymore, but I just. You like take your shoot. grandkids. Yeah, you uh, you got your set up there. I mean, you're. Yeah, I'm fortunate enough to be lucky enough to have my own range. You know, walk out my basement door and have my hundred yard range. Yeah, that's oh, cool. Like, yeah. Yeah, you know, and that, and and being, if I have to be critical of you know of the agency, uh-oh. uh oh, watch it now, is the only, that's my only critical that we should be. I used to argue we're twenty years behind in range development. Oh, range so development, yeah, yeah, available I, available for range development. Yeah, yeah, I've heard so, you say that. Yeah. So you know, how are you going to get somebody to go deer hunting and purchase a rifle? If they do not have a place to go, yeah, sighted in. that's right. Yeah, unless they join a club, uh, and, uh, uh, or if they know somebody with a farm, yes. you know they can go out to. Yeah, and, and and that's so important in this day and time because you're really investing. Uh, I was at Bass Pro the other day and I picked up a few what nots uh, as I always do. Uh, I'm very uh, optimistic when I always buy some field dressing gloves and things along that line. You know because uh, they tend to. To, to go away but i like to be prepared uh, for all situations and and i will say folks uh also uh y- you need to know how to field dress a deer because i know dave uh pain does not take that deer unless it's field dressed and i've never really had a problem with that uh, i'm not the fastest i saw peanut kwan field dress a deer in two minutes uh you know there's there's an art to that but there's also an art also to getting ready for the season. Be prepared. You know, I know we all get excited uh, that the night before, I, I, even at my age, that I still get excited, and I'm going to leave something behind. That's just me, you know, and I get there and say, now where is that at? But Dave, 
Gabbard has supplied me with some of the little ba- those bags. How much do little bags weigh, Dave? Those uh, ammo bag like things that I'm putting my rifle What's on. Sandbags, huh? How much they the weigh? That you put in. Yeah, my sandbags. sandbags. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but it depends on how much sand you put in. Well, I mean, if yours, you gave me two of them, and they're, they're about ten pounds, I guess, maybe or something like that. But they help yeah, steady. They help steady my. Yeah. You know, rather than just putting that barrel on the deer stand rail or something along that line, there's so many things that you learn, even at my age, that you need to know. Well, we got to get out of here. I, I got to have one more pun before we a uh, pun to go. All right, a uh, uh, pun to go. You know, my uncle's wife is such a bad cook. Really? Yeah. The that fr- uncle again is. Oh, his whole he's family something is messed up. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah. The, the flies pitched in and patched a hole in the screen door. The fly- <laughs> Sounds like a Rondy Dangerfield. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Gene, thank you for being here, Shelby. It's good to be back in the studio. Uh, look forward to uh, listening and talking to everybody next week on Outdoors with Larry Ray. Go to LarryRay.com. Get all the information you want. Go to Facebook, and uh, we're there and everything. Again, uh, it, it doesn't cost an extra cent to be a good sport. And what else, guys? God, God bless, bless you as today. Well.